so I have published one more new video on my Vidme channel which is not available on YouTube. You can uh, watch it here for free and don't forget to watch it in high resolution otherwise the hazy outlinings in the back of the possible pyramids won't be visible if the video is too much blurred. And now that I have finally managed to list many dozens of uh, historic sites that need field research and uh, field research results will be appreciated and um, posted here if they are in your vicinity please visit these sites and here I want to show you actually what you can do if you find valuable artifacts now you see these uh, exemplary citizens, they found the artifacts and decided to bring it to safety to the local museum. Yes, safety is everything indeed. Since most of the megaliths on our planet are not well studied, they are not being excavated or often even not protected by law, people usually don't even know about them. They are uh, mostly lying in neglection and that is why the very idea of classifying them properly, there is no need of uh, such classification because people don't even know about them, most of them at least. But as I started collecting them on uh, megaliths.org, the need of proper classification became obvious. And that is why I not only have megaliths, but also I have uh, cyclopean megaliths, elf castles and pancake techniques. So in this video I'm gonna explain the cyclopean megaliths. Actually, as I was looking for a proper name, I found out that um, this is a forgotten class or style of megaliths and I'm simply trying to reinstitute this name again because a uh, couple of centuries ago when archaeology was uh, much more scientific than now and it was uh, not limited by um, centrally government run academia People uh, knew more about the megaliths and they had proper names. The word cyclopean simply refers to anything absolutely gigantic. And um, intrinsically all megaliths are gigantic. But uh, in my context I refer only to a particular style of megaliths, not all of them. That's why the category of megaliths is different from the category of um, cyclopean megaliths. So what is um, peculiar to them are these graceful joints of the polygonal masonry. They are not um, strictly defined. The blocks can be of regular shape as this one, but uh, very often they are not and they always fit the stones, fit with each other perfectly without the use of any mortar. So there is something very peculiar to the very looks. This is a very typical cyclopean megalith with the hint of pancake uh, stones. Very often the cyclopean megaliths have a pancake touch to them. This is best illustration. Here we see the cyclopean at its purest and here we see a cyclopean with mixture of pancake. This is the wall. Here in the Yonaguni also at one place here we have a hint of this. These are drill holes. But here on uh, this particular image again we have uh, definitely cyclopean style. Graceful joints no mortar in between. And on the other hand we have many many megaliths that can be gigantic, for example Baalbek, but they are not classified as cyclopean because we have absolutely regular blocks. We don't have those complex uh, curved surfaces of uh, interlocking between the blocks. For example this is Perpericon 
again absolutely big blocks but it is not classified as cyclopean because this is uh, yet another style this is elf castle that will be a subject of another video the elf castles are halfway between the cyclopeans and the more recent let's say uh, peruvian or turkish style uh, megaliths alacho uh, and uh, olante tambo being examples of such also the triliton of tonga this is huge definitely but it is not cyclopean this is in uh, the united states it is big, definitely. We can see here huge blocks, but the gaps between them are not uh, as those of the Cyclopean megaliths. Although here we may have a hint of pancake technique, we don't know the quality is too poor of the picture. So sometimes such mounds, they have uh, absolutely gigantic um, blocks for roofs, absolutely huge, but they don't fit in such a jewel with such a jewelry precision with the next stones that's why they're not cyclopean this is somewhere in the wilderness of uh, georgia it is quite big but definitely not cyclopean we don't see this uh, we don't see the masterpiece joints of the cyclopean megaliths it is simply big but it is too rough or this amazing uh, island of syria this is huge, this is very huge, but we don't have the cyclopean precision. This is amazing, look at the small ants, I mean, the ant people. And this must be a monolithic cast of geopolymer. I'm just speculating, but uh, otherwise what, did they dig the full I uh, island just to leave this one like that? Or did they cast it? It's really not clear. This wall used to encompass the full island once upon a time. The main attributes of the Cyclopean megaliths are the very high quality polygonal masonry and unhumanly big blocks. There are many such megaliths all around the world and usually people tend to believe that they are natural formations simply because nowadays um, it is our lifestyle to live in a very small box and uh, since these blocks are far far bigger than our box it is natural that um, we can't see them for what they are because they are outside of scope of our vision anyway we have limited our vision to such an extent and we have convinced ourselves that you should not lift your eyesight and look up to see everything that's why we tend to remain blind for them but not all of us especially lately a lot of evidence piles up and it has become undeniable that many of these sites are of an intelligent design not all others i have also included in this category of cyclopean megaliths and at the same time they belong to another category which is called site or formation that could be either natural or not. In other words, many of the sites still don't have any proof that uh, they are indeed of an intelligent design, but simply because of their absolute one-to-one -one resemblance to other sites of identical looks, that's why they also have to be examined and at least theoretically it... Uh, should be assumed that it is possible that they are of intelligent design as well. Now let's see what does this mean practically. This is Gornaya Shoria in Russia. This is one of the examples where we have de definitely a structure of intelligent design. The full thing, the full complex is of a kind of a roundish shape with smaller circles in the middle. This has been uh, reviewed by a proper geologist, that's him, you can see the interview, it's here. Unfortunately, it's in Russian, but uh, he was the very first one who drew the attention to this site, although it is a Sidorov, this is Sidorov on this uh, 
photograph who made it uh, famous. By the way, I've also heard him say on interviews that sometimes blocks standing next to each other are of different material, although I could not find um, photos illustrating that uh, point in particular. Still, that is another strong evidence showing that this is not a natural formation. Just look for yourself. We have so many absolutely regularly shaped blocks. The surfaces, the inner surfaces are very smooth. We don't know of any natural processes that could result splitting a natural bedrock in such a fashion with um, absolutely smooth inner cracks, if you wish to call them in such a way to explore that type of hypothesis. And also we have uh, the full thing is a wall. So... Uh, for now, the only viable hypothesis is that these are absolutely gigantic building blocks. Again, for the simple reason that uh, this is not a naturally occurring phenomena. Blocks of absolutely regular shape to stand innocently next to each other. This is Sidorov. Now, another main feature of the Cyclopean megaliths is the type of destruction they very often face. Often the stone appears to have melted in places uh, you will see it even dropping as it has been melting, which means always for some magical reason very high temperatures seemed to occur near this type of structures. It's not clear are this uh, were these tunnels originally or simply as the blocks shifted away they got formed. So on the basis of a number of such sites where we have a confirmed intelligent design, on the basis of that we can uh, put question mark next to many other more naturally looking sites. And now the last char characteristic feature of the Cyclopean megaliths is that they tend to suffer from these holes. These are also gigantic actually. They can be a couple of meters in diameter. Officially these are ritual balls. I really don't believe in this simply because there are so many and in such positions and sometimes they are sideways. It's obvious as you will see on the coming photographs that something has been hitting the megaliths. Also they appear on uh, places where two stones have uh, separated you know, so this was definitely not a part of the original design of the building. This is the damage on it. Of course, there is a small chance that, um, let's say, tribal people found the demolished megalith and made a ritual cup in it. But this can be believed only if you see one or two cups. Actually, there are so many thousands of them and... Uh, they are at very unusual places and some of them are not cups but swimming pools. So all this uh, ritual use is uh, absolute fantasy. These are the wounds of the megaliths in reality. This is what I mean. Just so many of them hits. This is a um, very similar site, Arakus Kishihan. Again, the touch of pancake mixture of uh, pancake and pure cyclopean. Yeah, ritual cup, a rather large one huh? for a cup. Here, it's just so many of them, these wounds. And these tend to be proper walls, actually, these uh, megaliths, or at least that's what left, what's left of them now. This will give you an idea of the proportions of the full thing. This is here the wall goes. This is another one in uh, Vatovara, very similar site. 
with stone balls. We have here a finished, I don't know, floor or part of a wall. Again, very, very regular blocks. This doesn't occur naturally. This also doesn't look very natural. Well, and this is, I think, even those with uh, problems of vision will agree that this doesn't grow on uh, strawberry plants, this type of swimming pool. So that's how it is. Between the blocks it's absolutely polished. This is the main reason for which uh, geologists say this cannot be a natural formation. Here and there straight angles are still alive. These steps also doesn't look natural to me and it's not uh, only them, I think uh, this is found at few locations in uh, this Vatovara megalithic field, so to say. And France, actually I made a new video about very interesting things in France, you can see it on my vid.me channel. In the forests of France it's absolutely the same thing and also they are pyramids. Well, at least very suspiciously looking uh, pyramidal hills. So this is a very very interesting uh, video. I advise you to see it. And the link to it is uh, found here on the page of uh, this Unidentified, unstudied ruins and possible pyramids in France. Just click here and you can watch the video for free. And it's full of cyclopean remains as well. Actually, it seems to me that this particular wall and a few others were made by a later civilization that was just collecting the stone ruins stone from the ruins of the Cyclopean megaliths and making a secondary use of them. Because this is not a Cyclopean style, but it is uh, found near the Cyclopean ruins. Uh, Viborg Bay, I have a full video about these megaliths. Here we have obvious wall, obvious uh, remains of buildings, many, many, it's all in the video. Part of the survivor's documentary here you can watch. This, everybody accepts that uh, this is wall. Sometimes we have even remains of uh, mortar. And all around it, as you will see, it's just a uh, Cyclopean megaliths going for miles and miles, even across countries. It's both in Russia and Finland. So these are undeniably ruins. Nobody still have dared to say that this is not a wall. And it gradually turns into Cyclopean megaliths. Even I can't say where is the boundary. Is everything intelligently made? But for sure, all this needs to be studied. We have very, very valid and very big question marks. And sites like this, they put the question marks. Now, Paraiba, my favorite site. The important thing here are the videos. Please watch them very carefully and you will be shocked. Just the full area around it is uh, demolished cyclopean structures like this cracked and it's it's just a vast area of it again perfect polygonal masonry all this is present here for sure and everywhere the same situation we do have elements that are most definitely of intelligent design and then everything around is like a aftermath of a bombing so the full thing needs to be studied very very well this is uh, yet another megalithic complex undeniably of uh, intelligent origin the cups are everywhere so-called cups so here we have uh, a definitely intelligent design 
huge slabs covering a square or we don't know even how big it is it goes underwater it's uh, made of different uh, stone than the megaliths on the top again we have absolutely regular slabs and all this seems to be present exactly on these sites we have some drill holes here and this one in Poland again few things look naturalish but this this doesn't look in any way possibly natural to me all these are absolutely regularly shaped blocks yes if this is taken separately I would believe it this could be a natural formation but when you have a look at the full complex absolutely regular grid here another one all this needs to be studied very well here people find in the wilderness of Canada here we don't have yet proofs that uh, this is of intelligent design but it already starts looking suspicious and this look ex looks exactly like the wall on the Ecuadorian pyramids so most definitely this needs to be studied also the area of the Inga stone please see the videos all around still some of the stones lay together embraced in polygonal way so they didn't get these funny strange shapes being rolled around by natural forces they were part of such a structure this needs to be studied really badly the full thing you can see in the videos and then here in Australia again here I can't say for sure I see a polygonal masonry but I bet that if uh, people go and um, investigate this place on the top they will find the origin of this hill to be extremely suspicious that I guarantee you and other thing that I guarantee you is that you will still find stones here and there that fit in a polygonal way same thing in Bulgaria people don't believe that such things happen naturally it's not only me again regular stones stack next to each other another wall absolutely same style and all these strange things fall from the skies exactly on these walls this is in Canada I haven't heard people hinting much that this is a megalith just uh, here and there but when we see the style and uh, if we put a bit of brain power in it it becomes clear that such things have not been yet observed to form naturally so by default this should be considered a non-natural formation to start with and study it after that and these are these are really really big and everything that i have said so far about the other cyclops is valid here as well the interesting is how people have connected to them as if the same builder made them all over the world I could be convinced that maybe some lightning split this rock if it was only one but it always happens exactly on such sites so it is even suspicious I mean look how are they placed how this could have occurred naturally inside absolutely smooth walls I mean can we even call them cracks no this hasn't been observed for a stone to crack in such a smooth manner here we have a full structure the beautiful polygonal fitting still intact this is how this is from the same site when this rock erodes this is the result this is the work of mother nature 
not this, not this cracks. This is not erosion, this is something else. Now this I have found by chance because of the menhirs in front. But I think this is much more interesting on the back. I suspect this could be megaliths and actually the people placed their menhirs in their vicinity because they were smarter than us to figure out that this is a place of power probably. And wherever these megaliths go, always the cups follow them. This is a human ant. Now these are dolmens officially in Brazil. But when I look at them, I'm getting the impression that this could be simply uh, stones, remains of a cyclopean megalith that have been displaced by whatever forces destroyed the whole thing. And these uh, gaps could have appeared because of the destruction, not because somebody was building a dolmen intentionally. Everything is possible, that's one hypothesis. This, if you show me separately, I would say, yeah, natural formation. But in the context of everything else, I start doubt doubting. And then all kinds of small, small things also hint towards an intelligent design. These are uh, absolutely huge megalithic uh, blocks. And then in between them, they are on the bedrock. And then in between them, there is a ball stuck. And as you can see, this is a non-local stone. The bedrock is of completely different color. Another feature of the Cyclopean megaliths is that they often are made of a stone material different than the bedrock. In cases like this, even a non-professional will notice immediately. And again, we see molten stone, wounded stone, with all these cup marks. And the next site I'm gonna show you is rather huge and the full thing is made of non-local stone means different from the bedrock it lays on. This is a perfect illustration to what happens to these sites. Usually why do we see only this much ruins left? Where is the rest if it is so big? This full thing, maybe once upon a time, was uh, something like the, those uh, stone castles in the fantasy movies. And something hit it, and that something was rather hot. It's obviously the stone here just started pouring. And no wonder that we see all this around. This is also one of the main characteristics of uh, these categories, the Cyclopean megaliths and the pancake stones. Always around them it looks like this. And always they tell us that the glaciers have dragged these stones. Why didn't they drop them on the way? Why did they decide to carry them all the way to the top of a hill? Always and carefully pile them up over there. And if they were dragged for thousands of years, then why are they still very sharp, freshly chopped? I really don't buy this story of the glaciers. This is one of the best sites that illustrates this category, Wars of the Gods. And that category, when I put all the thousands of sites here, will become very, very big. This new video on my Vidme channel is particularly about this topic, the freshly chopped stones with sharp angles. And such piles always, always seem to land near the megaliths. This is much, much bigger than Baalbek. By the time you reach the end of the stone, your beard is long. And this is on the same site. The Cyclopean megaliths, they go hand in hand with the typical pancake. And it forms a wall. This is a full natural reserve. Natural. The nature of what? Oh.